What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate, Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate, then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum, which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out to Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Highvold, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, David Wayne Foster, David Rakia Gifford, Edwin Johnson, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin', Jeronism, Joshua Belismo, Kirsten Smith, Life is Short, Matt, Michael, Nyby, Paige Love, Guitar Craig, Reinhardt, Rene, Sally Ballis, Sam Hain, or Sam Hine, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, FlatEarthChannel.com, Tina Baker, and Tom Perkins. Massive shout out to all of you for supporting me. I will raise the mic on the G Plus and Discord servers while I set up for the first live show. Are there any mods in the Discord server? Oh, tenth man's in there, which tells me that on server mute so no one can talk to each other all right let's take you hey. off mute real quick john i just dropped it in uh, at you in skype on directly at you that, that video yeah thanks i got the notification hey nathan hello I, I, i'm only going to be a minute or two i'm just going to finish off my coffee now the machine's charged up Hey, Nathan, just want to let you know my guy took everything from OBS and everything saved in OBS, man. Just want to let you away know. for coffee. About it, John. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be up to speed. Give me about two or three days working with this monster and I'll get up to speed. I can only just hear what you're saying because there's a lot of noise. I'll just ask you to repeat it in a minute. Hold on one sec. I'm back now. Ready to rock and oh, roll. Joy. Oh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can tell you're pleased. So he, he transferred all OBS. All OBS was, is looking good, man. Brilliant, but not the virtual audio cables. The virtual audio, audio cables, I found them, but they're definitely not mapped. So Why not I'm getting... what do you mean? Do you mean they're not in the sound menu? 
Yeah, they're not. I couldn't find them. Now I got Vio and Ox, but I couldn't. The cables aren't in there. I it it's they're just not mapped. I don't think it's a big problem. We'll just run the programs again. I'll catch hold of Anthony. He already knows about it, so I don't think it'll be a problem. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Them damn virtual cables are a pain in my ass. Indeed, they just, are. Just a couple minor other glitches. Some of the things that he saved are in OneDrive. Friggin' OneDrive. I want to nuke that friggin' thing. So that caused some problems. But other than that, I think I can work through the glitches it's like i shouldn't be complaining it's 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 looking good man i can feel the power behind this thing is it noisy not at all i can't even i haven't heard it yet excellent that's normally my first priority make sure it's not noisy so brian computer guy here you know I, i'm going to give you a little tip do you want to get a bit of paper right now yeah he just woke up. Hold on a second. What are you going to tell me? Get stuffed? No. Good. You're going to find a piece of software called CAM. C A M. And what it does is it's. A monitoring program for PC temperatures and usage. Software and monitoring. One second. Monitoring power and usage. That's correct. Okay. So just for the audience's benefit, I'm going to put mine on now, just so you can, so they can see what I'm talking about. But it's basically just a program to monitor how much use your computer's actually how much actual use it's doing at any given time and how hot it's getting okay so depending on what you're doing it's, it's worth knowing what what's doing what when you've got a brand new computer just for the first week or so and then when you're running your show I mean, I've, I've stopped doing it because I've, I've done the upgrades that I needed to do. But before, when I wasn't paying attention because I'd done it when I first built the PC, I upgraded the monitor to 4K and suddenly everything started overheating because it was right. on a knife edge to begin with um, intentionally, but I just hadn't thought about it. So then I have found this new piece of software, which is relatively modern um, and it's 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 quite tidy in terms of it just shows you everything all at once on little, little daily bar things that show you how much is being used and then gives you in a percentage. But if you see cool. your temp if you see your temperatures getting up to ninety plus degrees C, which I definitely was, then you can you know it at least lets you know before something gets damaged. Uh, that's really cool. Thanks. You get it up yet? I've I've got it up. Why did you want to see it? I thought you were going to show it. I showed it to the audience. Yeah. Well, you didn't show it to me. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Oh, okay. There you go. Ah. Boy, that uh, that Intel Core looks very, very familiar. Four, four seven nine zero K is what you've got, but just with a K skew on it, right? Yeah. Yep. It's I same said number. Four seven nine is what I got. Yep. Yeah, mine's just a K skew. Just means it's unlocked, but it's basically the same chip. So yeah, so basically, um, let's just get my mouse over it. So obviously, that was my main problem. PC core temperature was getting up to like 99 degrees 100 degrees 101 degrees <laughs> hotter than right. it should even be able to be getting before it should be thermal throttling but it wasn't it was getting up higher than that in any event obviously now it isn't so that's great same goes for my graphics card not that not that that's particularly useful for you because you haven't got one it tells you how much storage you've got but it gives you you know more um 
useful information like your peak temperature. I got a graphics card. Which graphics card did you get? That's a good question. I have to go search for it. Yeah, yeah. In a couple of days, I'll go ahead and download that. It's called Cam C A M. Correct. All right. But Thank just, you. Good, just good practice if you've got a new computer, to just based on any use case. Typically, I think that the fans will probably be set up automatically, but you just don't know. You might not have paid any attention to that when you set up your computer, your computer guy. Mm -hmm. So what I miss? How do you mean? Yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I was gone one day, yep. Um, you know? Cool. Couldn't tell you. Can you hear me hitting my computer, my keyboard keys? No. I love this Yeti. A little bit. Oh, no, a little bit. You're hearing things. Not, it's not like Anthony used with his cherry, whatever they are, keys. And click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got a gaming keyboard, which is, you know, intentionally got to pronounce click, so you know, in each keystroke registers, which is fine for gaming. <laughs> not exactly great for <laughs> broadcasting. <laughs> How's the mic, uh, the mic sound? Fantastic. Couldn't be clearer. You sound better than I do, probably because your mic's closer. I sacrifice yeah, a bit my, of quality so it's not okay. in my cam in my frame. Even though I'm only on camera for about a minute, <laughs> I just can't bother <laughs> to move it. <laughs> I listened to it the other day. It sounded a bit strange. Just clear. You've just got more dynamic range to your voice, so you're not used to hearing yourself actually sound more realistic. That's all it is. I, I pumped up the gain on, in the software, the one that you hate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me see. Hold on one second. I'll share my screen. All right, let me send this out. All right, all right. I'll show you the game. I'll show you the software screen. Hold on a second. There it is. All right, one second. Let me see if this works. I got two screens. Let me see if it gives me two screens. Yeah, it does. Sweet. You got me? Yeah, it's... Uh... Very crude control panel for your mic. <laughs> yeah, this is the one you hate right here, right in the software program. It's not needed. Yep. It's just totally superfluous to requirements. How but dare you? I'm not saying it's not good. I'm sure for anyone who's just using the mic, it's perfectly adequate. It does all the basic functions, but you've got a desk, so you don't need that. It's just totally not needed. Stop sharing. That's, it'll be enough out of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. You, you cheaped out on the mic, and now you're paying the price with software. <laughs> I, did, I just didn't. Joking. I looked at the. I looked at the regular Yeti. It's just too damn big. Big? Yeah, I think it's big too. It, you know, I don't like the look of it either. It, it looks ugly. The Nano yeah, is nice. Nano it's a good-looking mic, the one that you've got. And as far as I can, as far as I understand, it's just ninety percent as good as the Yeti, anyway. But for about half the price. Yeah, I don't know, but the, I think the Blue Yeti was something like a hundred, and the regular uh, size one is the was one hundred and thirty. I don't know in US dollars, maybe about yeah, and this one hundred and fifty pounds, something like that. Yeah, and this, well, in dollars, it was like 130. This one was 95. Okay. So, you know, third less there, thereabouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's perfect for me. The way I sit, I have poor posture. I lean forward a little bit. It's absolutely perfect. Cool. Are you talking into the front of it? Yeah. 
Yes, I am. Sounds like it. <laughs> my speakers are directly behind it, along with my keyboard, and you can't hear them. No, it's all good. No complaints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll muck around with it maybe tomorrow or something. I'll grab a hold of you and, and see what we can do in voice meter because you're a whiz at that stuff, man. Yeah, right. But let me. Whatever. Just let, just let me get the virtual cables going and because they, yeah, they weren't choices. I went into Skype and I was looking around and I had the settings down. I wrote them down and it wasn't giving me the virtual cables. So no big deal. I went into the sound settings too. I couldn't find them. All I could find was bio and aux. So, oh well, they might just be hidden. That might not be a problem. It might just be that when you right-click in sound, it's got uh, unconnected or disabled devices hidden. So it might just be that they're there, but they're not enabled, which is not a big deal. So it may be that there's a very quick and easy fix. Let's just do that now to share screen again. Who cares? We're recording. Sorry, audience in Nathan Oakley. While you're doing that, um, the next thing you need to do, John, is if you ever share your face, you need to do the green screen with a wasteland behind you. That's what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, salt flats. All right, one second. There's a little trick to this. It's not like my last one. Um, open sound settings, sound control no, no, panel. No. What's this? There we go. So in there, just hover over anywhere in, in there, in the middle of the, and then right click. Uh, you see, see those boxes, does it, are they ticked? Show disabled and show? Yeah, they're ticked. Uh, so it's showing them already, so they're just not in there. Yep, they're just not in there. Okay. See, I already changed this. This is correct to the default, but no A and B. No. That's a bummer. Yeah, that was. I don't know how to help you out with that. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I found where the file is. They're downloaded. Even if I didn't, I have the download of the cables. I can always download them again. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I mean, at worst case scenario, you have to donate another five bucks and, you know. No, 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 no. I told you I still have the, the download. I saved that email. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then that and, should be dead easy then. And I have, I have them. Uh, uh, in a file, like I said, they're in a file, so... The file's not going to be much use. It's, there's obviously some sort of installation program that goes alongside them when you download them. So, right. Um, yeah, you just have to... If you've got the email, perfect. Yeah, just download them again. That should be it. That, that, I would imagine that will be the, the solution. The solution, yeah. I think, I think I'm good, man. Like I said, there's just just little glitches, but all in all, I think I should be good to go. Wow, Q, you sound so different. I oh, know, I didn't recognize him. When he first got the mic, he didn't tell he me. Did. And honestly, I thought it was someone else talking. Wow. That's it's nice. because he's uh, talking from his half dome desk. He's in a closed system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crayon munchers. <laughs> You've distracted me so much, I forgot to actually schedule the live show. He <laughs> sounds like the radio. <laughs> yeah, you sound good. Excuse me. Yeah, you do. You sound miles better. You, you sound literally like a different person. Professional? Yeah. It depends. <laughs> Is there, are, are, are people on uh, Discord able to see the screen? I, I wasn't able to see anything you were showing, QE. No, there's no screen share facility in Discord, unfortunately. I mean, what... Betty did originally, and we trialed it, and it did to a fashion work, which you could do a, like a, a, a room like live stream where you could actually share. You can probably see it's there labeled mm -hmm. screen share link, but you had to faff around with like an interactive link that you all joined to share screens. It wasn't very good. I mean, it was okay. It, it kind of worked. We'll get it working. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get it working. That's one of the next missions uh, we're going to do. So, yeah, we'll get it. All right, four minutes and we'll go live. 
four okay. more hours. No, no, four, four more minutes. More minutes. <laughs> Just enough time for me to share the show. Hey, Nathan, you might have to take ball busters again this week, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll oh, see yeah. because I can't, because my Discord, uh, I couldn't even get into it. Discord was all screwed up. So let's play it by ear. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, what else, could, what else could go wrong by Saturday? You can, you'll have it all figured out. I have supreme confidence in you. Unwarranted. I don't mind doing it. You know, I'm not saying no. If you need me to, I will. Let's put it that way. Dan. Don't need stress. In other words, it'll go out one way or the other. If I have to run it, that's fine. Cool. Thanks, man. But ideally, you know, I won't. <laughs> You'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> ideally. I'm not. I won't. Hello, the one, by the way. Bye, I guys. Need to, Sorry. I need to feed my teeth and brush the cat. What? What? Right now? A couple minutes. I'll see how it goes at the first part of the show. If it's boring, then I'll go. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, we boy. are so privileged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing when I'm switching screens, if I click and drag something to the other screen, it gets caught in the middle. It's like another dimension. <laughs> oh, has it got Snap2 turned on? Snap2? Yeah, so it sort of snaps the windows into the corners of the screen or the full screen or whatever. Nah, I don't know. What, what the hell is that? It's a wormhole. Nah, it's no big deal. I found a little trick to to unleash it from that unlocked dimension. It's a crack in space time. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a crack. You're right. There's like an inch and a half crack between my two screens, and it gets caught right in between them. So, yeah, it's a crack in space time, man. It's a fabric. Damn you, Einstein. Call <clears throat> call George Musa. He knows how to snap things. Thanos can snap things. Just so you know, you're in the after show on Discord. Just so you know. And the show hasn't even started yet. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> Thing. I think he was trying to say that you said Discord isn't working, but you're in Discord. Is that what you were saying, Paul? No, he's actually, if you look at the Discord, he's in the after show server. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate, then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum, which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to... Oh, let's just turn that off. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. 
Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion right here, right now, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Paul, Quantum Eraser and The One in G+. How are you all doing? Hello, hello, hello. I'm not in Discord, I'll tell you that much. No, I know you're not. We've also got a whole bunch of people in Discord, though. Hello, everyone in Discord. Hello, hello. Very good to have you all. Didn't hear that. Say that one again. It wouldn't be the start of the show without rumblings from Discord. Darren, go ahead, Darren. Yeah, yeah, next Tuesday, maybe. <laughs> we can't hear like you. You're just, not, you're just not loud enough, Darren. Can I just that on? Anyway, any signs of Earth curvature? Not from Missouri. Sorry to disappoint, but no, nowhere. Any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Yeah, last time nope. I heard they no. pulled their axis. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Scientific evidence of what? Gravity, the bending of a <laughs> conceptual medium to giving rise to a non-force, or force that you can think of as a force that's not actually a force, called gravity. No, I cannot have scientific evidence for stuff that doesn't exist. That's correct. Yeah, there is no scientific evidence of gravity. Moving on. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure? Like the stuff we all breathe on a daily basis? gas pressure we definitely know exists without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon as is asserted in the fundamentalist sphere belief of a sky vacuum otherwise known as outer space any evidence that you can have gas pressure without a container no we definitely need the necessary antecedent for gas pressure which is the container hey chocolate so good. good morning guys Hey, Chocolate, managed to catch your coffee? What's up? What's up? Did you catch your accelerating coffee cup? I think that was what the one meant. Yes, yes. I didn't accelerate too much that I couldn't catch it. <laughs> As you know, it was just sitting there on my, on my table. <laughs> so it's you therefore not, it. not accelerating. Speaking of nonsense, <laughs> any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Hey, Arwin. The drawings on a paper. Will that count? Drawings in a textbook or on paper, no. No. Evidence yeah. that we have a molten iron core. Mm. Hello. Hello. No, no got... evidence. What's this? What's nope. Paul got up? Yeah. Stop borrowing. I was gonna, I was say, hey, Arwen. I think every all the ancient cultures understood the necessity of a container with gas pressure, except NASA. That's all. That was all I was gonna say. <laughs> That's gold. They, they all understood it. Gotcha. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Mm. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's a very, very tough one. It seems that, yeah, as soon as people try to estimate some kind of distance, it really all 
comes down to what are you going to presuppose the Earth's surface to be geometrically in order to establish an apparent location based on triangulation. But as to an actual measured distance, I've never seen anything that actually concerns some kind of empirical measurement. Yeah, well, there no, are they're wrong. That... They're wrong on any m measurement numbers for the sun because they're wrong on the nature of the Earth to begin with. So they're measuring but off not, of it's a... not a measurement. That's the whole thing. It's it's an an a calculation um, based on a presupposition and then using trigonometry. There's no actual measuring going on. That's the problem. I was trying to talk and yes. Absolutely correct. But I'm trying to say it in the terms that they give us the garbage. So they're measuring, which they're not measuring, from an earth that's not a ball, that's not spinning, and yet they want us to believe they know the distance from here to the sun. Give me a break. I think George Musa should be cited in all pages of, uh, like, textbooks you can think of it is that but it's not that after every text learned in school like in science hey kids earth the uh, sun is 93 million miles away you can think of it as 93 million miles away but it's actually it's not right oh, did you guys notice my uh the video i posted of this guy that thought he proved the earth is a globe by putting sticks on the ground <laughs> And I put that comment there that said putting two sticks in the ground in different places and calculating the sun's angle difference is not proving the earth is a globe. It is begging the question for a logical fallacy. I'd hope to get more upvotes on that just to bring it to his attention. Uh, yeah, I went to it, Arwen. I gave you an upvote. Thanks. Speaking of presuppositions, any evidence of the presupposition itself, the R value, earth radius? No. Dominus Spiritus Sanctus, in power you trust. Thank you for the blessing. <laughs> There's no evidence for any of these things. They live in the world of math, M-A-T-H, and they reverse it so it makes sense. Uh, so they make up things so the math works out. They have no evidence. They're no longer scientists. They're pseudoscientists. Mm. Liars. Pretender clowns. They're scientizers. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. That concludes the housekeeping. Scientizers, scientizers committing scientism. For the worst, man. Scientizers? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? That's the new shit. I just <laughs> made it up. <laughs> say that. S scientizers, uh, Arwen, making up scientism. Arwen say, Arwen, say scientizers in a thick German accent. It'll sound better. Sorry, I didn't get that. So, say scientizers in a thick German accent. It will sound more official. Scientizers? Oh, he's halfway away. <laughs> I'm buying it. The accent makes sense, like the math. What math? Let's recap. So we're not living on a flying ball. No, the math actually does work out in their lie. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, but math still works out on a flat surface. See, they're trying to say math doesn't lie, but the fact that they lied about the math negates that. Well, math is reality as long as it's based on global geometry <laughs> or what is it? Geometry. That's, that's their real argument. When they say that. Well, when you already know what you want, you just reverse engineer the math so you always get what you want instead of being honest. Yeah.
Exactly. I'd like to know when I walk across the street and I get hit with an equation, then I'll know that math is reality. <laughs> so then, math is math and reality is reality. That's just how I see it. Yeah. Do math, so math can do, you can do whatever the hell you want, put whatever numbers you want. Well, can you right. imagine that you would consider something as not real if you can't calculate it somehow? Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, quite easily. They have a presupposition of an R value and a spherical world that's based on it flying through a vacuum. It's not difficult to consider the idea of somebody reifying mathematics into a reality worldview. That's definitely not difficult. We're living in it. Uh, I, I was actually more implying, like, can you imagine, like, trying to calculate feelings or something? Like, how do you, you can't define everything in math, you know? St oh. Things still exist that just you can't really calculate it in math. No oh, like opinions. Math like words, it just describes stuff in numbers. Yeah. Right. You're saying your feelings aren't calculable. Yeah. Well, can you describe it in math? No. No. Exactly. But sometimes even words cannot describe them. So it's the same thing. Great. Well, despite me not being able to describe feelings in math, you can't describe that either. <laughs> yeah, you can't describe that either. Got a thunderstorm passing over here. That's why I'm so quiet. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Got any? Uh, Hello, believers in Discord. Any pear shape, guys? Anybody catch a red pill this morning? I didn't, I didn't really know what he was on about. He was mainly about Simon Dan. Yeah, I woke up and he was going at Simon Dan. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Can you repeat that so quick? Huh? Can you repeat that? I said, when I woke up, I, I saw a red pill philosophy with me, and he was going at Simon and Dan. I guess Simon and Dan, I called him out or something, or made a video about him. I don't know. But he was bitching him out because he's like, why, why don't you come and debate anybody live? Which apparently he doesn't. So, I don't know. Uh -huh. Pretty funny. For a minute, I thought you were going to say it was about the trampoline pulled by a tractor. <laughs> what an image. <laughs> right. The one that proves Coriolis by not showing deviation? Oh, that one? Yeah. <laughs> right. Simon then can't Coriolis. Hey, chocolate. Hello. 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 Is that Erwin? Uh, uh, hey. No, not you. No, I know. Uh, but Erwin is uh, a guy I met at the Amsterdam conference. He's Dutch. Oh, hey, hey Erwin. I think it was Redman. So I take it you did. Yes. Sorry, just to brand that out. So you don't know either why he was what his beef was because I didn't catch that either. Chocolate. Wait, say that again. I'm I didn't catch what Red Pill's beef actually was because I I came in midway through the stream. So oh, I don't... oh, um, no, I don't. I can't say because I think you came into the chat soon after I did. So I didn't catch much. I just heard him calling him out, saying that he couldn't really, uh, he doesn't debate anybody live, so he's just kind of a bitch. <laughs> That's kind of what I caught. So I'm assuming he, he I, got, I guess, got mentioned by Simon Dan or made a video. I'm not too sure. But yeah, he was calling him out. And then I think he, he stopped into the chat real quick, Simon Dan, and then left again. So I don't know. Which is kind of funny, him calling him out.
does anybody know if Soy Man Dan is related to Captain Sensible? So re related to who? Is Captain Sensible, Logic and Cheese, Mob Ed on YouTube? You're really hard to make out, my friend. I think he said Captain Sensible, but he does need to fix his mic. Tenth man. Hello? Yes, tell Nathan to check his DMs on Discord. I'm I'm in I'm in Discord myself. I know. Tell Nathan to check his, please. Yeah, but he could hear you as well as me. You catch that, Nathan? Check what? Check your DMs on Discord. Someone I don't know said what that is. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks. I have no idea what that. That's like that's like, no that's that that like your inbox, your personal message. I don't know what that is. I, I don't, this Red beyond man. what I do with this Discord server now. This is what I use it for. What is it you want to? What is it you want to say? Just say it. I'll, I'll send it to chocolate. Are you talking to chocolate? Look at that red man, right? Yes, sir. I'll send it to you, and you can share it to Nathan, right. uh, Master B. Right, Master B, yeah, 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 perfect. Can you give us a clue? <laughs> one, two, three. Uh. Well, I know one thing. After uh, Coriolis got beat to death, Earth-based variety, that is, that doesn't exist, the Globers are shy about coming onto the show. Yeah, saying you don't understand reference frames doesn't last very long as an argument. They have nothing left. They lost it all. What's so hard there about understanding? Chocolate. What's so hard about understanding where the reference frame is? No, there isn't. That's just their only defense when the idea that Earth has a reference frame that's demonstrating a Coriolis deviation is smashed into oblivion because nothing's demonstrating Coriolis deviation. Their defense is to say, you don't understand reference frames. And then they put out videos to deny deviation. Yeah, exactly. Some of them have got so lost in the weeds of the argument that they think the argument is to justify the lack of deviation. <laughs> that's, that's how far <laughs> the weeds they've got. <laughs> so, yeah. That was and they classic. come here and quickly find out that they're supposed to be showing deviation to prove Earth spins. It's just a shame there isn't any. It must be a bit of a shock to some of them when they go... Yeah, look, here you go. Look, things don't deviate. Oh, yeah, they're supposed to if you want to prove Earth spin, so. And suddenly they go, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. And I, and Re I think you woke them up with the, 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 the bullet being in the air for, for a split second versus something being in the air longer should show deviation more. I think that woke them up a bit. And a $100 super chat from David Rackier Gifford it says, come on, normal ballers, share your normal pain. Racky your life. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, Dave. Rakia, uh, shout out to Rakia. Don't you think, it, I just, with a bit of em empathy, you can kind of put yourself in their position and go, wouldn't that be a bit of a shock, though, if you'd been following along with the argument? And you feel that the most sensible way to move forward is to demonstrate why planes don't deviate. Because that makes sense, right? That seems like a, a logical argument to be having. Until a flat earther points out that you're supposed to be showing it deviate. Wouldn't that be a bit of a shock to you if you were a fundamentalist globe believer? With an IQ and science acumen yeah. less than zero? No thanks. These guys are clowns. 
Do you think just cognitive dissonance immediately sets in? No, no, not cognitive dissonance. Retards. Just stupidity. I don't know. Cognitive dissonance can make you pretty retarded if you no. can't overcome it. No, it's retards with the clinical level Dunning Kruger syndrome. That's precisely what they are. All of them. So Dunning Kruger is on, John. Of course, they charge us with that as well, though, John. So. No. no, well, we could. I can back it up. I'm not just saying that. I can show case by case by case, thousands of them. <laughs> that's a, that's the difference. See, I got cowbell. That's the difference. Can we uh, define Dunn and Cougar for some of us who don't really know what that means? Look it up. It's in there. Cho uh, chocolate is in there. Yeah, I got you. I posted it to Master B. These are memes, right? Yeah, a couple of pictures. Did, did these want displaying? Say that again? You want me to put them up? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess that was the purpose. Anyone see Professor Dave hanging around the flat earth? Recently. No, but I, I got a recommendation in my YouTube the other day from a, a video he did on <laughs> thermodynamics like three years ago. So I thought that yeah. was kind of funny. <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> why, first of all, why am I getting this recommended? And uh, second of all, what the hell is he talking about thermodynamics? Thermodynamics? He doesn't know jack squat about it. I exposed his dumb ass like three or four weeks ago. I haven't seen him around. It's a good thing. Don't come around there, Professor Dave. I don't, I don't know how I could show your face after that. To be honest with you. Clown. So on the well, Red Pill Philosophy broadcast earlier, Chocolate, I was trying to communicate to Red Pill the fact that um, Simon Dan is YouTube verified. So he's in a position where he's essentially ridiculing people on his channel and talking about a subject that apparently isn't to be talked about on, on YouTube, Flat Earth. But yet he's YouTube verified. That is a little funny, right? Is that is that what that check next to his name is about? Yeah, that means YouTube approve. They're like, he's our man. He's YouTube verified. He's doing what YouTube approve of, other than attacking people who are fellow YouTubers and talking about a subject that apparently shouldn't be talked about. It seems that what they should put in a disclaimer in brackets afterwards is, unless you're ridiculing the crap out of it, then in which case all of the other rules don't apply and we'll give you verification. What's the process of verifying your channel? I don't know. I'm nowhere near popular enough to even consider that. I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't realize that was actually like a thing. Like that. That little check was a YouTube verified check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, well, I didn't know till about a week ago. Wow. So uh, there's a guy called Sam Time, Australian guy who who just like um, piss takes out of people like Samsung and Apple and sort of mimics their ads but in parody form. I like him. Fun. Subscribe today, Sam Time. That's where I nicked that from, actually. Subscribe today! That's Sam Time. Anyway, he lost his verification about a week ago. So he was YouTube verified. And then he hit 200,000 subscribers and lost his verification. And he's like, put a little video about it. And I was like, I didn't really appreciate that that was a thing until Sam Time was talking about that. So, um, and then, obviously, then you notice it everywhere, right? And I was just like, okay, well, who is verified? And and suddenly you can see Simon down with his little tick and go, oh, right. So that's that's what they want. They want people to ridicule Flat Earth. Sci-fi scam. Sci-fi scam is so daft 
He couldn't spell cat if you spotted him the C and the A for crying out loud. Maybe we should just call him side chat then, since that's the only place he actually spends his time in the oh, side yeah. chat. Side chat then. Yeah. Wait, so who else is YouTube verified? Because I don't see anybody else with that YouTube check. Well, in our arena, okay. I don't think anybody. I mean, if you can tell me someone else who's YouTube verified, then I'd be happy to hear it. But as far as I'm aware, that's it. Now, obviously, there's plenty of YouTubers that are verified, but I'm just talking in this particular small corner of the internet known as Flat Earth. So, journalism should be verified soon. He has lots of subscribers. Yeah, but no, journalism no. is pro flat earth. Yeah, he's pro flat earth, that's so that's not allowed. Correct, chocolate. Sorry, I talked right over that. No, it's all good. But exactly, yeah, he, he, you know, it's not part of the rules. So exactly. if, if you're if you're pro flat earth, that's definitely not allowed. If you're anti flat earth, then you'll get verified, even if you're ridiculing people. You can think all of these it all being in all the these heads. Uh, Go on, Seth, man. All the heads of these tech companies uh, in the past few months, if not a year even, spoke in front of Congress here in the U.S. under oath. Come to find out they lied about everything. So why are we surprised? Well, we're not, but many of the people who are watching and on the Globe side might not like hearing this, but they're suffering Stockholm Syndrome. They'll be lied to repeatedly and still defend the rhetoric even in the face of the liars overtly telling them or changing part of their rhetoric they'll still absolutely still worship them that's stockholm syndrome it's an issue of not wanting to think for yourself and trusting authority and being lazy about running down the truth it's just not important to them i guess it's so easy to be spoon-fed your information about your worldview. Yeah, they come along, here comes the choo-choo train, Earth's a sphere. And that will continue throughout your adult life if you allow it to. Or it's not yeah, there are people like that. Well, most people. Most people are like, oh, it's, uh, it's too much to have to worry about being lied to on a massive scale. Mm, I'd much rather just be spoon-fed my, my worldview and, you know, I'll go along with the crowd. That's far, far easier to yeah, just fit in. Yeah, but they'll defend uh, their favorite f football team or baseball team or basketball team and know every detail about that. But when it comes to something really important, they, oh, no, no that's just a conspiracy theory. Oh, absolutely. The mundane nonsense is positively encouraged to be discussed and debated. Like the football teams, as you put it. Yeah, that's positively encouraged. Nature of reality and whether or not you're being lied to about it, that needs to be ridiculed. Thank God. Well, at the, at the end of the day, you don't have to adjust your life in any way. Just because you find out it's not a spinning ball, it's not like now you have to stop adjusting for, for movement or you got to, you know, you don't have to make those types of changes because you already experience a flat stationary plane. Well, yeah. well, that the only might be difference true. is now it's your mind state that you have to change. Well, that's the problem, isn't it, for them? That's what they want. <laughs> yeah, they don't give a shit whether or not you recognise the nature of your actual reality around you in physicality. They want control of your mind. The government. Mind control, right? They want yeah. you, as an individual, to be thinking along their lines. Their thoughts. So, chocolate, after RC Cola told you your coffee cups were accelerating you didn't make any adjustments nah i still <laughs> i still get coffee and i sit it on the table and it still does not accelerate that's just look, where I, I put it i want to <laughs> just just before we go off on that look yeah you chocolate's right the nature of your reality the world that you see with your two eyes and hear with your ears that's not going to change you know recognition of what it actually is doesn't change how it's been when you thought differently about it. The world doesn't suddenly unfold from being spherical when you realise that it was always flat, always will be flat. That's that. Nothing changes. You're correct, but that, like I say, isn't the. That's not what they want. They don't. They don't want you to, you know, walk out into the world and actually see a curve. That that's irrelevant. They just want control of how you think, 
and having, Precisely. having you under control is what they require. And no, you're not necessarily going to change any of your worldviews in physical terms, but what you might do is stop watching television, for example, or stop listening to the argument about blue versus red, or paying attention to the football match. You know, the, all of those things are very bad because they leave you with extra time to actually consider things, as opposed to sitting in front of a TV to be spoon-fed on a daily basis. Well, those are the things that you might relinquish as a result of realising you've been lied to. And some of those things people don't want to relinquish. It's like the scene in The Matrix where Neo's exp uh, having ex explained by Morpheus that many of the people in the system don't want to let go of the system. They're happy with the system. They like the system. They want to eat hot dogs and watch TV. And as a consequence of realising the nature of your reality and how you've been lied to, mostly through things like TV and the media, you're going to go, oh, well, I don't really want that anymore. And just by natural, just by how you will naturally deal with it. So abandoning those control structures, which is ultimately what things like TV are, that's the reason for the control in the first place. They want you to be under control. And appreciating that you lied to might mean they lose that control. And, and that's why the agents... It's interesting, about. It's interesting that I consider after... consider to be a lot of these globes. Uh, I'm sorry, Tiff, man, guys. No, no, go ahead, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I'll come after. Chuck, no, I was just going to say, like, that's that's when the Agent Smiths pop out. Like, these, these, that's what I consider a lot of these Globers that come in here and want to fight this nonsense every day. They're the Agent Smiths who are trying to keep, you know, the regular people from finding out the truth or even trying to consider it in any um, normal way. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're the ones that get called chills. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, when I talk to people now, I say, hey, have you watched The Matrix? Do you know about The Matrix movies and what they're trying to put out there as a message? And I say, well, that's exactly what I'm realizing we're in right now, is that you and me, on a human level, can't even agree if the Earth is spinning or not. You're buying all the government BS, and I'm asking you to think for yourself. And all you could do is make fun of me. Now, why are you making fun of me when you can't even prove one part of your globe fantasy? Well, it, it's, it's really a, incredible that the actual movie Matrix is actually happening <laughs> right now. Well, it's, kind of, it's, it's inverted, though, isn't it? So, you know, in, in the reality, in the world of the real, as they call it in the Matrix, they're out in a sort of desolate desert, with everything having been burnt because the machines burnt the sky, right? That's the, that's the world of the real. And then when they go into the world of the Matrix, it's like we see in our reality. So there's buildings, you know, I think it's in New York or somewhere similar with lots of, you know, high rises. And that's the world that's presented as the fake, if you like, TV world, the not real world. It's the illusion world that's pumped into your brain via a cable. Well, the illusion world is the heliocentric world. Space. There's plenty of space movies that you're watching. You haven't got a cable into your head. You've got eyeballs and ears. And you can watch and hear the sounds, sights, not smells, of space on your television screen. You can get news updates about what they're doing in space. So that's the, juxt that's the sort of parallel that The Matrix has. Their fake world, their TV world, is actually our real world. You know, it does just look like that when you look around in reality. But when you watch on the Matrix vision that is your TV screen, they're showing you a world of planets out in a vacuum of the sky that you'll never experience, but you believe is your real world. Now, the link isn't a connection into the back of your skull. It's just the TV screen. It's just the radio and the newspapers and the bullshit that you'll talk about at the office that seems important because you're told it's important. Can I just go back yeah, to yeah. Okay, go on the one. Edward, when he said about them laughing, when he, he tells them something, that the bad thing is that nowadays they think that they're cool and they think that they're smarter when they're laughing at you. This is the big problem. They're so far out of in touch with reality that it's unthinkable. But that, that's the problem that a lot of the fundies that aren't familiar with the show have when they come here and they join the Discord server. It happened a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about Back to the Future. It, yeah. it, you know, someone will come in. Like. 
that their assumption is their position is correct. And they're told, incorrectly, that of course flat earthers are by default wrong. This is the idea of a philistine. This is an archaic notion. Therefore, you are automatically correct in your assertion that Earth's a sphere. And you can be confident when you go and challenge flat earthers in their stupidity. And you can just call them stupid because that's what they are. So most people come here with the, the same confidence that you're describing. They're automatically assuming they're correct. Therefore, why would it be any challenge to come here? And normally when they're handed their ass, it's a total shock. You get deer in the headlights or hysterical laughter. Because they can't quite comprehend the fact that they're having their ass handed to them by somebody that's deemed to be, by the mainstream media, incompetent and retarded. Hey, by the way, talking about uh, Back to the Future, since we kind of want to get some Globers in here, I wanted to share something that I kind of remember right now from Back to the Future, like in 1997 or something. I remember having these very elaborate discussions about time travel and how it couldn't work because like Doc Brown and his car, they would basically be appearing in the middle of space because the earth would have traveled in a wider circle location wise. So you could never end up at the proper place. I remember having that discussion back then. Damn, never thought of that. Yep. Yeah, well, I did. That's one for the fundies though. That's the kind of argument they love for you to yeah. have because well, I know, that's why I'm bringing it up. You're questioning heliocentrism and saying that time travel wouldn't be possible because the physical location of Earth would have changed in its trajectory around the great attractor or whatever they claim it's doing. But ultimately speaking, you're still talking about another aspect of Einsteinian mechanics when you talk about time travel. Yep. I kind of like that, though. It's like, how can you go back in time if where you appear, like if you appear in the same place... It won't be the same place because Earth would have obviously moved, right? Time travel <laughs> would only work if you have perfect spatial control, and then you would basically have a teleporter at it. Or the Earth has to be absolutely stationary. Oh, hold on, let's just break this down. Right, what's, what's traveling? <laughs> what, what does traveling mean? Jumping through a dimension to another time. Blah, blah, blah. Um, traveling is what? Moving through dimensions, through no, the, that's that's pretty through, elaborate. Just give it me in basic format. What's what's traveling? Through Euclidean force space? Just moving. Moving from one Just moving, place right? Place. Moving. That's traveling, right? What's time? Concept. Time. Concept. Time is the natural progression of all things. Na na natural progression <laughs> that we're now gonna what? manipulate change it's just a progression a concept of how things progress so the Art idea of you, you're working outside of the concept itself when you start think, talking in terms of manipulation it's no different to talking about manipulating gravity or space-time you know you're working outside the confines of the, the concept itself yeah right. it gave me three kilos of time this is where they want to have the discussion so they don't have to have the real discussion. Yeah, they want parallel universes and Mandela effect and time travel and heliocentrism. Hey, so they I'm want just nonsense. Fishing for Globers. You know? Just throw, throw it out the bait. Yep. Come on, Globers. This is interesting, right? Space time, space travel. What's Space interesting is the, the way the mainstream sometimes punts it is to say that it's interesting to see that science fiction will often become science fact. And then you become a flat earther and realize that science fiction was preordained by the people who will later give you science fact, which is also science fiction. So it's pre-programming <laughs> pre nonsense with science fiction. So they're going to give you fiction, which they'll call science and is actually pseudoscience. But so you'll accept it easier... They'll give you science fiction in advance of the pseudoscience and then tell you that they've got science when in reality both are exactly the same thing. It's just you've been told what you were going to be told before you were told it and then after the fact it's reinforced. So it's just your standard programming bullshit. First tell someone what you're going to tell them. Then tell them. Then summarise what you've told them. And in the case of bullshit... Do it with predictive programming and subliminal messages. Stick it into a movie, a science fiction, then later present it as science fact. 
and then talk about it in summary as though that's the case. Or just uh, play it before every movie in Universal Pictures logo, like 20 something years before you go out in space, send that ball before each movie, so you get them brainwashed. Man, don't don't mention that. Don't tell them that they had that symbol before they went to space, and they got it almost perfectly right. Don't 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 say that. That's just a coincidence. Uh, they just got a time machine. They saw it in the future how it looked after space was explored. Well, I'm taking a different tact at the moment uh, with people. It's based on. Numerous shows here, as well as other things that we hear ballers say, and round and round and round we go with them. It's really a battle for the mind. So I'm challenging people to, to think, because the powers to be have them already. They're already in this non, uh, how can I put it, this false world that, you know, this false paradigm that they're in. So then when they meet a flat earther, they immediately mock us, which is a sign that someone's already got your mind. And it's already programmed you to mock that concept or that idea that the earth may not be a ball, rather than discuss it and say, wait a minute, if it's a ball, then shouldn't this be happening? And then you run away from those nice arguments that we have, the seven housekeeping questions. So at the end of the day, it's just... The programming is exactly what it is. They want to program your mind. So we got to get to the mind and show these people are just sheep. They got to get pissed off that they've been programmed. So shout out to the rumpus who says in chat literally, uh, you deserve to be mocked. You have the IQ of a root vegetable. Really? Mr. Air is not the atmosphere? Really? <laughs> Clown. Come on, Rumpus. Come on the show. The dumper. On, Rumpus. Discord server is actually we, full. We miss you. <laughs> full, of, full of quiet people. Yeah, well, if Rumpus wants to come on, I'll go off because I want to hear him take down a root. <laughs> Just put it in chat, Rumpus. I'll give you my spot. It's like the side chat Dan will be the chumpus. Come on, Rumpus, Mr. Coriolis at the equator. There is some jiggery poker I, going on in uh, Discord, so if you do want to join, there is gaps on the panel. Link is in the info box below the video. We've got about a quarter of an hour left on this live stream. Yeah, some of the most absurd, stupidest things I've ever heard came out of Rumpus's mouth. I mean, the toe tags are just a show in themselves. Oh, you can understand the math behind Coriolis. How about just showing it to me? How about just showing Earth-based Coriolis and assume I don't know math? Just show it if it's real. Come on, Rumpus, quit lying. Yeah, go get a video of it and show us the video of Coriolis happening in real world. Third base. They can't. That's why he goes to math. So every single person in mid-age, let's say, should have at least one proper evidence that he's living on spinning ball. Like, everybody went through the education system, so there should be a lot of people capable of coming here and producing at least one good scientific evidence. There is none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rumpus, cyclones and hurricanes. Is that where you're going? Actual weather? Hmm? Right, let's just nip this in the bud. So, if there's a claim that a Coriolis effect, which is a not actual deviation observed from a non-inertial spinning reference frame and it's claimed that hurricanes for example are an example of this well then 
it would stand to reason that what you're actually observing is a trajectory of a wind that's straight and you're observing a not actual deviation just an apparent deviation because you're rotating underneath the straight trajectory of the wind now this is absurd they have actual spin directions it's absolutely nothing to do with Coriolis effect unless you're going to be sitting on a hurricane rotating with it and watching something that you throw from the hurricane this is absurd Hurricanes are not anything to do with Coriolis deviation on Earth because they're an actual spin gonna, direction. They're not a not actual apparent deviation of something travelling straight but seeming to curve because you're rotating underneath. Rumpus doesn't understand what Coriolis effect. If he thinks that toilet water whirling down a toilet and hurricanes are actual spin directions that are uh, not actual possible. apparent spin directions, that's absurd. Stupid. I, I got a question for you. If we're so dumb, why do you dedicate every single moment of your life watching us? We're here because we're flat earthers, and you're not, so why are you here? Yeah, it would be akin to me spending an eternity on Magic the Gathering websites, telling them how stupid and you know childish they are. Not that I've got anything against Magic the Gathering. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't make I, any sense, you know, why why these people stalk us every single day. It it makes no sense at all. Hey Dougie, I I, I kind of want to quote Star Wars now. Obi Wan Kenobi, who's the bigger fool, the fool or the fool that follows him? That's the rumpus. Well. Nathan, you put I, it I precisely there. Maybe, maybe if they're going to stay... For asking, if they're gonna, maybe I'm... All, I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> I always do that to you. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. That's all right. So I was going to say... I'm Duality. Say um, we... All right, again. Oh, sorry, Chalker. Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay, bro. I was going to say, like, maybe I'm all face for asking this, right? But... If they supposedly take pictures of hurricanes, and, uh, quote unquote, satellite photos of hurricanes and stuff, right? And they appear to be rotating from above them. Well, why would that be if they're only rotating due to a Coriolis force experienced by somebody in a non-inertial reference frame, which would be the rotating Earth? Well... On top of that, Am I wrong if there? they even dare <laughs> that to go there, with, me which Rumpus did. Above. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, just to piggyback on what you're saying, if they're even going to do that, they lay a big trap for themselves. Because the minute that they want to prove that hurricanes prove Earth-based Coriolis, then the hovering drone, the helicopter, the aeroplane, the bullet, the footballs, all of it, has to be also accounted for, and they're not. So Actuality. That's how, that's how you know these people. that the hurricane is a false proof for them. Because if it happens with a hurricane the way they want us to know, then it's got to happen with everything else I just said. But it doesn't happen with everything else I just said, so they can't use the hurricane argument anymore. They're just doublespeak, coward liars like rumpus. Who won't come on the show, and if he does, he's broken within 60 seconds by a flat earther, and he can't take it anymore. His ego won't let him. That tenth man, they just keep doubling down. First, it was um, when they realized that airplanes and helicopters aren't going to work for Coriolis, they switched to bullets. Then, when they realized that that doesn't work, now they've switched to hurricanes. But in actuality, like these people only exist because we do. If Flat Earth never existed, Rumpus wouldn't exist. Simon Dan wouldn't exist. We created these people, so they need to start giving us credit for that because they would not exist if we didn't exist. And they actually make money um, off of using our material. So we, we do a lot for these guys. <laughs> Rumpus, I'm, I'm reading your last chat. Helicopters and airplanes don't move when they 
lift off just like jumping up in the train you come back down in the same place airplanes etc are guided and powered winds are not i could break that argument down in my sleep you dingbat uh brenda will say that the rumpus is a natural phenomenon so I suppose Earth is a closed system now, just like a train? No, no. That's is that what, what he you're wants. saying, oh, Rumpus? Hold on. I've got to stop you there. That's what he wants. He wants you to compare open and closed systems so we can then argue about that instead of Coriolis effect. So don't lose sight of what the argument is. He's saying it's like a... This example, we're arguing about Coriolis effect and Earth needs Coriolis deviation to prove it spins. So his analogy is a train. When you throw a ball, well, that's not a deviation. You, you don't understand what Coriolis effect is. You're like Simon Dan, you stupid retard rumpus. An example with a train not showing deviation isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about Coriolis effect, you stupid dick. Now, the train's not giving you a deviation, and that's precisely what you need when you're talking about Coriolis effect. So let's not talk about planes not giving you deviations and trains not giving you deviations when you're inside them. We're talking about Earth rotating underneath Coriolis deviation. As claimed by Neil deGrasse Tyson, the ball gets kicked and the Earth rotates underneath. So when you're talking about a ball deflecting or seeming to deflect as you observe it from the non-inertial spinning reference frame claimed to be Earth, that's Coriolis effect. Now when you throw up a ball in a, play, in a train, that's not Coriolis effect, you stupid idiot. Don't you understand the subject we're talking train. about? Train... We, it, it seems a train is just, not hold, hold on one second I'm Earth. not done berating rumpus a train See, is a I'm not done system. berating rumpus Babs it seems you're stupid rumpus as stupid as Simon Dan if you want to talk here about Coriolis effect you need to understand what Coriolis effect is and it's a deviation a deviation from a non-inertial reference frame a not actual deviation an apparent deviation a looking like it's deviating when it isn't because you've got a rotating frame underneath that example is not given to you by a ball returning to your hand because that's not deviating you stupid little man you're as stupid as Simon Dan who also clearly doesn't understand the argument here that's attempting to prove earth spins deviation is what you require so your example on a train not giving you deviation like an example on a trampoline with boards stopping the air movement when towed by a tractor a not deviation isn't going to give you proof earth spins so why on earth would rumpus be here detailing examples when we're arguing about coriolis effect that don't give you deviation well because he's going to justify why earth doesn't give you coriolis effect with this little train example, with a ball not deviating. Understand this. Take this as an education in Coriolis effect, Rumpus, you stupid little man. You need deviation in your examples, and your train doesn't give you that. Clearly, you are so stupid that you don't actually understand what Coriolis effect is. It's an apparent deviation. Not a lack of deviation, like your example throwing up a ball in a train. That's not Coriolis effect, you stupid man. We're talking about the claim Earth spins. That's what we're debating here. You, with your off-in-the-weeds examples that don't give you deviation, have absolutely nothing to do with the claim that Earth spins. You need deviation, not a lack thereof. Try to get with the program. We understand what reference frames are here. And when you've got a train with a ball returning to your hand, you've only got one reference frame. Coriolis effect needs two. It seems these fundies, like Simon Dan and Thicko Rumpus don't understand what Coriolis effect is and don't understand what reference frames are. You need two of them to prove Earth spins. It's as simple as that. Giving us endless examples with only one reference frame clearly demonstrates that you don't understand reference frames or Coriolis deviation because you keep giving us examples that don't have it. So get with the program, Rumpus. You need to show examples with deviation to prove Earth spins not justify why you don't have deviation with single reference frame examples like a train because that ball's not deviating when it returns to your hand and you need it to to prove earth spins with two reference frames you complete idiot you and simon dan are two for a pair both completely stupid deviation is the name of the game if you're trying to prove earth spins not showing us why it doesn't you understand it thickos <laughs> no, uh, and and Rumpus, a train is 
is moving in a rectilinear motion, which is not analogous to Earth because Earth is rotating and that train isn't rotating. So using yeah, that yeah, as, yeah. as an example yeah, is using, flawed as well. As. Same, he's using the same argument he used years ago. It, it's just rinse and repeat inside a train damn near a closed system you don't live in a closed system you moron you live on your paradigm fairy tale earth open system number two shameless plug time at 2 p.m u.s central on the quantum eraser channel it's robert bassano and i from a hangout a few years ago and thursday robert bassano and then next tuesday live Robert Bassano interview on the Quantum Eraser channel. Be here, be spear. Why don't why doesn't Rumpus just explain to us what Earth based Coriolis effect would look like for Simon and Dan? Well, and then let why, them come in and defend that position. Why are you asking? Well, why Rumpus? are you even asking them questions? Yeah, well, uh, good good point, QE. Why, why would you ask this man? He's just. While we're detailing Coriolis and arguing about it on the show, he's in the chat talking about single reference frames and balls returning to your hand. A lack of well, deviation. I, I... So he doesn't understand oh. Coriolis effect. There's no point asking Rumpus anything. He doesn't understand the constituent parts of Coriolis effect. Two reference frames. These people who accuse us of not understanding reference frames are simply projecting their own ineptitude onto us. He doesn't understand what is needed to prove Earth spins. Can you pop yourself on mute, Paul? Two oh, reference sorry, sorry, frames, sorry. not a train showing you a lack of deviation, you complete moron. And I will say it again, Rumpus is as stupid as Simon Dan to give us an example that doesn't show deviation when Coriolis effect is an apparent deviation caused from a non-inertial spinning reference frame rotating underneath an inertial one, giving you an apparent deviation. So all these crappy examples like trampolines and balls being thrown up and down in closed trains with single reference frames being claimed to be demonstrated doesn't give you earth spin proof. It's just a simple ham-handed justification why we don't have proof earth spins because we don't see things deviating. So that's what they'll argue. Look, here's something that doesn't deviate because they don't understand Coriolis. They're stupid. Simon Dan being the first example of stupidity and then Rumpus now backing that stupidity to the hilt, showing a single reference frame. Don't you understand reference frames in Coriolis effect, Rumpus? You need two of them, you stupid idiot. Just dumb. Beyond dumb. If you want to talk about single reference frames examples, Dumbo, you clearly don't understand Coriolis effect, do you? It seems you are stupid. That's why you're here, to demonstrate over and over again just how stupid you are, giving us single frame examples of Coriolis that needs two frames of reference. Maybe you'd like to tell me I don't understand frames of reference, Rumpus, while you demonstrate how you don't have deviation, the very thing you need to prove Earth spins, you complete idiot. With that, I'll say if you're watching this on Nathan Oakley Premiering Stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley 1980, then this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you. Smash the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. As I say, stay tuned if you are watching on Nathan Oakley Premiering Stream. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! The only reason I was, was asking him to describe it because, you know, they're just talking about reference frames and velocity and all that stuff. That's the only reason I said that. So have him describe it and then prove it. Yeah, I think Nathan beautifully rounded off I'm that show. Of, they want I'm us to go, just to go into the argument. Just, just demonstrate they, it. Yeah, they want us Damn, to Tim, argue yeah, with them the question. Them, bro, so, so sorry. Yeah, yeah, Chocolate. You're cutting him off and he's kissing my ass at the moment, so shh. <laughs> <laughs> all right i they don't mind losing the argument within the argument of begging the question because they'll lose all day long they have for years they just don't want you to talk 
outside of the begging the question argument. So I just love the way Nathan catches it and rounds, rounds off the show beautifully with it. All right, I'm going to hand your re- rear end back to you there, Nathan. <laughs> no, you're spot on. I'm glad you made that point because that's exactly what they want to do. So long as you're arguing within the begging the question fallacy of a rotating frame, it doesn't matter if they argue for Earth and atmosphere travelling as one because that's got a rotating frame or Coriolis deviation under a bullet or a ball or something with a two-second hang time because that's also got a rotating frame so that they see it as a win-win you know us pointing out you don't have deviation therefore you don't have proof earth spins is the starting point of the argument and where most newbies get caught out and find themselves arguing about what Coriolis effect is and our argument's not Coriolis effect yet first proof earth spins then we'll argue about whether or not we see deviation as a result of that but if the claim proof is the deviation then we're going to need to see that as opposed to a constant justification for the lack of any deviation. Oh, Earth and atmosphere travel is one that's not giving you the proof Earth spins. You need to see the two deviate. It's just as simple as that. Well, ball thrown up doesn't deviate. So what? Earth's supposed to show you that deviation you're justifying with your train example. So is that the well, th- nail in the coffin? The Coriolis effect? All the housekeeping questions nailed? Well, I think that oh, hold when on, you man. hold that, their feet oh, to on. the fire on the oh, Hold on one sec, Tenth Man. Say that again, the one. So is that the last nail in the coffin, all the housekeeping questions nailed? How we can pin them precisely where they come with their uh, presupposition and fallacies? Like they have nothing no, no, left? No. Well, yes and no. No, these arguments died... The globe arguments in this regard probably died... I say 2015, that's probably not strictly true. I would say 2016... These arguments were cemented and argued about in, in plenty of places and were known about. Having a concise list of them, is that, that's not new. I, I'm not going to take any credit for that, having a concise list of these things that were debunked in 2016. And those arguments just haven't changed. Neither of their rebuttals. But, you know, from our perspective, who cares? We're the ones with the challenging questions that aren't answered and the debunks not changing is their problem. It doesn't mean that suddenly we have to come up with some new, more exciting questions. It's like, no, those are the be-all and end-all of their religion. So, you know, those those questions will never be answered because they can't be. They're phrased in such a manner, you know, any evidence of a <laughs> self-perpetuating multi-nine core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth. You know, there's no there's no answer to that. It's it's almost a comical question. Yeah, yeah, uh, that wasn't exactly my point. I know all of this. It's just that now it just takes 30 seconds to spot where they're coming from, so they won't even have the chance to try and bullshit. That's what I mean. You're welcome. Yeah, I was going to just took the words out of my mouth. You need to thank QE for it. It's him that's beefed up these questions to the point where they're concisely understood by most people. And in one breath, he might tell someone that they're off in the weeds, like I did earlier with Tenth Man, when I say, look, don't argue about a closed system. Now, while it might seem like I'm I'm whipping 10th man into line because only three minutes later QE talks about it being an open and closed system, but it's only because as the argument progresses, or or albeit in this case from the chat, it's an argument that requires you to know which direction the opponent is actually wishing to take you. Now, in this case, you know, 10th man summarised it after the fact, making me absolutely acutely aware that he does understand where that was going. If you start by arguing about whether or not Earth is open or closed, you're in the begging the question fallacy of Earth spinning. And then you're arguing about whether or not it's open or closed, and whether or not that open or closed would cause deviation. While we're all spinning in this example. That's the point, right, 10th man? <laughs> exactly. That I mean, I, I was going to get there eventually, but I'm glad you took it because it made more emphasis when you took it and actually stripped it of its uh, unwarranted arguing points that they try to get us in. But your point on when they go to hurricanes, which is an actual spin of the weather, no matter which direction, and how they try to tie that to Coriolis, I think you have to spend a little bit more time there uh, because if they want to prove Coriolis, uh, you can't do it with a hurricane because Coriolis is a apparent deviation. It's supposed, it doesn't even describe a hurricane. You can't even use a hurricane. So spend some time there. I think that's a great argument that you put forth. Well, it's clear that they don't, I know they do. They're just, you know, deliberately obfuscating these agent Smiths, whoever it was that brought that up earlier, good analogy. You know, they, they do understand Coriolis mm. effect. We know they understand it, but they're quite content to lie and double speak around the facts. 
of Coriolis and what would be required for Earth to have it. So they are double speakers and it's absolutely intentional. I feel like talk, even talking about Coriolis is just like talking about the pressure gradient. It's like we're already begging the question. Prove the Earth is rotating first before we prove that there is a Coriolis effect because you need Earth rotating to have it. Just like you need the gas, you need the data to have the gas pressure in the first place. Yeah, I think it's the same thing at this point. Yeah, to which they reply, yeah, Coriolis is the proof we're, we're uh, spinning. Now let's argue about why it isn't deviating for an hour and a half. <laughs> exactly. It's like, Coriolis is the proof? Okay, what Coriolis? Yeah, we won't see a Coriolis. Earth's travelling as one with the atmosphere. The retention of the angular velocity when you leave that spinning reference frame means you won't see deviation. And up until now, no one's gone, well, that means you haven't got proof Earth spins then. They just argue about whether or not you'd see the deviation or what Coriolis effect is while they simultaneously tell you, you don't understand reference frames. Yeah, we do. And we understand Coriolis. But their arguments imply, that was the word I was looking for, that they don't understand Coriolis because they're detailing examples with single reference frames and no deviation. Like Rumpus and his plane, uh, train example. I keep saying plane. His train example has got one reference frame. The ball doesn't deviate. So what are we arguing about this for again when Coriolis effect gives you a deviation? Right. They're arguing for no deviation. They're morons. The Dumpus has no argument. Nice that we can concisely bundle him in with Simon Dan and his stupidity, though. All oh, right, so this isn't showing you deviation, then. So not an example of Coriolis effect. Why are we arguing about this exactly? <laughs> <laughs> try to try to well, the little trick with that ball. Try the same little trick with that ball on the back of a friggin' flatbed going down the highway at eighty mile an hour. Throw that ball up, see if it lands back in your hand. Clowns. This the only show. Well, the yeah, yeah. It's only Thursday and Friday. Do too. Well, the actual versus the not actual with the hurricane, I think, is a good argument as well because they just use that word Coriolis, but they they can't prove it, and so they just keep going to it. And the only thing they got left is. Paul said, uh, I think Zanuck told Paul, based on the earlier show, that he's just left to the hurricanes as the proof. Well, the hurricanes are actual, Zanuck. Did, did my question make sense to anybody earlier? I mean, w would a hurricane appear to be rotating the way it does from above if it was actually due to Coriolis? Wouldn't it just look like that? It's never going to be due to Coriolis, that was right? The case? This is like gravity, right? Coriolis is not a force. No, I, I get. Trust me, I get it. I'm just saying, like, when I'm trying to think of it as when they take pictures of it from above, right? Well, that's above. That would be in the same inertial frame, right? Correct. So, wouldn't it appear to? Go straight. <laughs> that right. Was the case if it was due to Coriolis. Right. That's what. It's a ludicrous claim. It's like Coriolis yeah, is yeah. a not actual deviation. So you're on your roundabout and your drone is hovering above the roundabout. Now, the reason they call it not actual is because what you're seeing on the roundabout is the drone seem to fly towards you and seem to fly away from you. Well, obviously, you are seeing that seem to happen, but the drone's actually hovering. So it's the effect of a, a visual phenomena, if you will, cause you rotating underneath. That's the cause of it. So if you're going to assert that a hurricane, when spinning, is caused because you seem to see it rotating when you're on a non-inertial spinning Earth, it's like that's ludicrous. It, none of that ties together with Coriolis effect in the slightest. I can't even I can't even detail it incorrectly and make the connections. Because it's ludicrous. It's got an actual direction of turn. And if you're to assert that somehow a not actual force, Coriolis deviation, the deviation that is a not actual deviation, the things traveling straight or hovering in the case of my drone example, that that not actual force, now the not actual force is you seeming to see it come towards you, 
There's no force there. It's not flying. It's hovering. But they're saying that that not actual force gives rise to what? The cyclone's direction or its movement in any way, shape or form. We're talking about not actual forces, apparent deviation. And they're saying that hurricanes have got something to do with it. It's ludicrous. Yeah, that was why I asked, because that was the first thing I thought when Kosho told me that, you know, a hurricane is actually going straight and it just appears to look how it looks because of the Coriolis. And I said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> he actually said that? He actually said it goes straight? Yeah, he said that. <laughs> he oh said the winds gosh. of a hurricane travel straight. They just appear the way they do to us because we're spinning. Because of Coriolis. <laughs> that, is, that. that is cognitive dissonance. There's no denying that. Well, it is oh, you, guys, you guys ever hear of uh, the term dust devils? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on my property here, I get them all the time. So you see it, you see the, that whatever causes it, heat and cold or whatever. And all of a sudden you see this little tornado, but it's, it's not a real tornado, it's like a dust devil. And it's spinning, and everything else is spinning. Now, for me to be kosho, I'd have to say that's not spinning. That's straight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. But that's, that is cognitive dissonance. So even though, presumably, he appreciates that they're actually turning, you know, you do have a direction of spin. And to also assert simultaneously that it's traveling in a straight line, but you're observing it seem to deviate because you're rotating underneath that's definitely holding two positions simultaneously that's definitely cognitive dissonance and based on that logic every wind that's going in a straight direction should be viewed like a this devil if we're spinning and that's the cause of them Got quite a few people in the Discord server. Shay or Payne? Hey, Righteous, I got the message. Uh, so uh, I finally got around to it. I finally figured out how to do it again. So I moved them. Hey, hey, John, I got a question for you. I asked it on your show last week, but you probably didn't see it in the chat. Uh, you know the guy that you said that was in Antarctica for 18 months that you had on your show? Remember him? Yeah. Robert Shortman. Yeah, did he ever talk about a 24-hour sun in Antarctica? Yeah. Did you ever ask him yeah. that question? Yeah, I asked him about that, and he said that was bollocks. I did a massive, I did a really expansive interview with him. It's my most popular video on Nathan Oakley 1980. So it's called Confessions of an Antarctic Plumber, and he goes through in detail his experiences down there, and he's asked specific questions about the sun, and he makes it very clear. The sun, from his vantage point, rose... And he's sticking his arm out. I'm not on camera at the moment. And he just shows a very low arc over the horizon. That's what the sun did. And it did that all throughout the year. It didn't ever go around him in a circle. He never experienced 24-hour sun in the Antarctic. It's as simple as that. He was there for a full year non-stop, 18 months in total. I remember that. I've seen it many times. It might be good just to have a refresh on that. Maybe get him back on an interview. Maybe get him on the show or something. Just talk about that one more time. Just to he's, not, back the in our he's not on the scene anymore, as far as I'm aware. So, I mean, I, I met Robert Shortman down at a, a meet in Oxford about three years ago, and I couldn't believe my ears. So he came down, explained who he was, or someone collared me and was like, "Have you met the guy who's from Antarctica?" Was how it was phrased to me. I'm like, "From Antarctica." No. So, you know, shook his hand, immediately started videoing him and, and did a little mini interview there and then on the spot as soon as I'd met him. I was like, I've been told that you're, you've are you been down to Antarctica. And he's like, yeah, I used to be a, a plumber and I got a, uh, somebody explained that they needed plumbers specifically down in this area. So I went and applied, I got the job and then I went down there. You know, you have to spend a, it, it, on the main show on Confessions of an Antarctic Plumber, he details, you know, the acclimatization process and the traveling and, and various other aspects of being down there. Uh, various different rules he broke you know that was just common practice so there's various different antarctic treaty rules that are applied obviously to them as a as a research company down there doing research 
But it was like they quite frequently would burn pallets and boxes and, you know, just completely break the rules. And it's like, yeah, that's standard fare. Or they'd bury stuff. They'd dig these holes and just, just bury all their crap in it. You know, quite literally, all their waste, all their junk. They'd just bury it in a hole and move on. It's like, yeah, that sounds in keeping with the Antarctic Treaty. <laughs> bury your crap. <laughs> Well, that's telling for the actual tree itself that it was just put in place so people think it's about the environment. It's actually a call to do with the environment. That's uh, sort for the language. Well, that that was the other thing he told me that was quite comical. So he said that he liked it quite hot on the on the rig that he was controlling the temperature of, essentially. And um, one time he got it a bit wrong, or someone messed with it. I forget which. I'd have to go back and listen to it. But he explained that they essentially turned the temperature up too high and there was like various different wildlife that was essentially in hibernation, like in a, in a kind of form of status because of the cold in the wood and various other sort of natural fibres that are in this rig. And when they turned the temperature up, some of them started hatching. So essentially they've just introduced all these new life forms to uh, to the Antarctic, <laughs> you know, just, just pissing in the face of the rules, you know, just <laughs> almost comical. Yeah, we need to speak more about this entire trip on here. Just spreading the word out, people asking questions. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Those those sorts of meetups back then were, were prime examples of people that didn't want to necessarily appear on videos and just give their testimony, wanting to just talk about something that they knew in regards to the subject matter, like. Uh, We've talked a lot recently for some reason, I don't know why, but about Robin Poe with a 115 mile transceiver connection over in Italy. And, you know, the, she was no different. So she wasn't really making, she does actually do a few videos now, but back then she was, you know, she's just, she was in one of my chats. My very, very first live stream, in fact, had Robin Poe in it, leaving leaving comments and messages while me and my wife figured out how to, to live stream. And, um, you know, just got chatting with her and she just wanted to give her testimony. She just wanted to explain how she'd had her eureka moment 20 years or whatever it was after the fact. So she's done something that has raised an eyebrow at the time, but not for the reasons that it now makes more sense to her, i.e. the Earth's flat. That's why she got her 115 mile radio connection. Mm. And that's why they were telling her to link up the little relays, you know, in very, very short steps. So suddenly she's had a eureka moment, but at the time she didn't. But she wanted to tell people about that, and and uh, Robert Shortman was no different. I at the time he probably wasn't consciously aware that he should be observing twenty four hour sun, you know. So he's not taking any photos of it to to prove what he said. He's just given his testimony. But why would you? You don't go down there discussing twenty four hour sun and whether or not it's true, you know. If there was any inclination of that whatsoever, you probably wouldn't be allowed down there. So he's just normally going down there to do his job. He's a plumber. He's plumbing. Yeah, it's in Antarctica and highly paid. And yeah, you've got to do a lot of faff to get there. But ultimately speaking, he went down there, he did his job, he came back. Nothing to think about. Until Flat Earth comes on the scene and he goes, holy crap, they're discussing whether or not there's 24 hours sun in Antarctica. There isn't. I've been there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, watched, I watched that Robin Poe show. Back when you first did it, I, I can remember watching it and then saying, well, who who is this talking? And I said, what a knucklehead. Gee, thanks. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, man. Yeah, but I watched that. I watched it live. It, it was cool. It was a good interview. Yeah, I remember it, too. It's been a long time. So I, I, think, I think it might be good just to bring those back out and republish them. You know, I, I should. Run. I should, someone suggested that to me the other day because, to be fair, I'm like, oh no, I don't rehash it. I've got plenty of new material. But by the same token, a lot of those interviews came out when I had less than a thousand subscribers. So hardly, you know, when they might have a few people who've watched them, but I think I should, I should probably republish them and set the originals to, to unlisted. Uh, I saw it like a week after it came out, I remember. Robin Poe or Robert Shortman? Uh, the, the plumber. Yeah, Robert yeah. Shortman. Yeah, that was a good... I mean, I was a bit, little bit more popular when that came out. I mean, that video is almost viral. It's got almost 100,000 views. Not that that's technically viral anymore, but you know what I mean? It's a lot of views right. for me. 
Has anyone seen Robert Shortman around? I haven't. Not for at least 18 months. He, he, he fell out yeah, with I me at seen. one point. I, don't, I think I was presumably attacking Christianity in some way, shape, or form at the time, and he wasn't very pleased about it. You bastard! Yeah, I was, you know, at the time, I didn't know. I didn't know which direction I was heading, and I was at, I was up for Chris, uh, I was up for some Christian bashing. Sue me. <laughs> See, yeah, right. Yeah, that's a big club right there. I love, I love that club. I look forward to that club rolling on down the road. Well, it's it's worth noting actually, you know, because often people might get the perception that you know you and I are, there's never a crossword between us. Where in reality, many of my opinions in reality have changed as a direct consequence of talking to Quantum Eraser. And that's true for Christianity as well. You know, a lot of my opinions have changed as a direct result. So I'm not going to decry the fact that my attitude has changed. So, you know, it might be the case that Robert Shortman spoke to me now and was like, actually, you're not such a big a shit as I thought you were um, on account of the fact that you've changed your opinions. It doesn't mean I've suddenly become a Christian. I haven't. It just means I'm not going to bash various things that I did. Wise move. <laughs> right. Yeah, people free of cognitive dissonance can learn and progress, not like globeheads. Hey, Righteous, were you trying to drop me a hint? Me? No. Because you said, hey, Nathan, do you have two shows today? I said, oh, man, I forgot to move them. And I, I went was in there. Do the move, but I was in the after show, and it didn't show me the after show to move them to, so I made a mistake. Yeah, I've had all pro all kind of problems with Discord uh, last night and this morning, so uh, at least I got to move them. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah, because they've been really chatty. It's a good job they're all off mute. <laughs> <laughs> Come off mute and share your pain. Shout out to Chumpus and to. Chatman Dan. Chumpus and Chatman Dan. Dan. Did you say Chumpus? Yeah, Chumpus. Good morning, Zanuck. He's Chumpus in the chat. Oh my God, Zanuck? Dude, how could you, your name's like mud, man. What's up? Well, I'm waiting for him to get off mute and say hello. He can't, he's not going to get off mute. I don't, how in the world can you even show up anymore? I, I don't understand. Have you no shame, sir? I was going to ask you. I think he's been, uh, he's been busy doing his homework. <laughs> right, he's been on the physics forum again. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I mean, he's, he's trying to catch up, I think, because... Uh, last time we chatted, he was trying to, you know, talk over people and such, but he seemed to be a little bit more informed and, you know, at least he, he seemed to me like he took the effort and time to uh, read up on some material. On uh, physics So, uh, yeah, kudos for that, Zanik. What material? He doesn't even know what Coriolis is. Yeah, he doesn't understand reference frames. Doesn't understand jack shit. He understands logging into physics forums. Oh yeah. Someone was telling me that was a, a middle school physics forum. <laughs> I was gonna ask him what he thought about the guy that claimed that there's no twenty four hour sun in Antarctica. What's his thoughts on that? It's pretty clear he doesn't want to play. We ain't gonna forget Zanuck. <laughs> I that ain't happening. You're you're finished. Bye bye now. It was quite useful, you know, because you exemplify all of the different people that say you didn't understand reference frames, only to expose you as the pretender clown needing to go out and get clarity from a middle school physics forum about what reference frames are. <laughs> all right. Blame it on the rain. Yeah, yeah. I forgot oh, to send you. Uh, I forgot to send you that Mark Sargent clip, didn't I? I said I'd, I couldn't find it. I did go back to look for it. That's why I can remember that I haven't sent it to you. If you know what I mean. 
with the yeah. Mark poking the yeah, ball. you were supposed to. I'm sorry, you were supposed to send me something, right? What well, what was it about? <laughs> it was Mark Sargent detailing the vacuum of space argument really succinctly and concisely, and it it it, it, it was not an identical parrot of us. It was good because it wasn't. You know, he had his own little spin on it. But the, I'll just paraphrase what he said. So he gives an example and he, just just to set the scene. He's ta- he's de- trying to debunk gravity, but he's using this argument of gas pressure next to the vacuum of the sky. And he's saying that if the argument is that you can overcome it with gravity and you take a two-story house, or that's analogous to a two-story house, and it's actually a vacuum chamber, but it's got a cork between the two layers, and you... you uh, uh, suck all the pressure out of the bottom chamber and then you release the cork what's going to happen and obviously the gas is going to fill the available volume instantaneously it says if gravity is claimed to be holding the pressure here why wouldn't it defy the second layer of that house example when you remove the cork because gravity is supposed to be holding it here but it doesn't. It would expand to fill the available volume, and the sky vacuum is the available volume. So, although um, that's definitely not, you know, in any way verbatim, but that was as close as I could paraphrase how he made the example to debunk both gravity and the sky vacuum in one nice little snippet. I just, like I say, I looked for it for a qu- quite a long. <laughs> I thought it would just be on like his site, but it wasn't. It must have been someone else who trimmed it out. I just could not find it. Was it recent? Very recent. So if, you, if you're watching this on Nathan Oakley and you know the clip I'm talking about, feel free to post it as a uh, as a link to that actual video and I'll uh, I'll pin it. But yeah, I couldn't find it. But it was during an interview, so he's you know he's he's on air with somebody. It might be on YouTube, it might be on radio. I can't remember, but he's he's, you know, he's being asked questions and that question came up. And yeah, yeah like I say, he just did a a really good job. And because Mark's so much more viewed than we are he, his concise argument in that context is like yes because that will reach people's ears and get paraphrased hopefully not deviate too much from the overall point but you know obviously the the weaker it is in regards to someone like mark's presentation of that argument the weaker the general population that watch him will will perceive that argument and be able to convey it when they argue it whereas mark giving it in basically the same exact way we do not to be too big headed but that is the best way to phrase that argument and you know his his clear understanding of the argument meant that he could give a a, a new example with his cork and a two story house to qualify it to the person he's talking to which which immediately tells me yeah you understand this argument perfectly yeah if i find it i'll dig it out like i say i won't stop looking but i just didn't want you to think i'd just forgotten about it Shout out to Mark Sargent. Hail Megatron. Did you see it did a bit for the Amsterdam conference? Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, it was quite funny. So obviously you've yeah. gone to the effort of pre-recording something and passing it on to Dee Dee and she'd got it on yeah. air. Just it's good. good. He's a good, he's a good guy. Mark gets a lot of crap, but Mark is genuinely a good guy. Now, now he he's gonna get some crap about that other thing that he did where he's poking the bow with the knife. Some commercial or whatever it is. Yeah, I just seen somebody pu- try to punk him out, saying that he was a shill or something. You know the usual routine, and it was a commercial or something. I, yeah, I don't know. I didn't look into it. He did a betting app commercial, and he says things like the app works better when it's flat, and he holds his phone flat on top of a globe. And then he's admittedly, he obviously knows the deal because he's s- slightly portraying himself as a bit sort of backwards when he's stabbing a blow up a uh, globe with a plastic sword. So, you know, he obviously knows the bag, but he's talking about Flat Earth and all the other people in the advert are actors. The only one that's a a legit person is him, as far as I understand it. (laughs) 
Yeah, Mark yeah. always gets crap. He had an interview with an astronaut on British TV, and as soon as I saw it, I was I got, I got in touch with him. I was like, "Kudos, that's excellent. Jobs are good and great. Good job." And then, following that, for about the next week, I just watched people on our side, on the flat Earth side, give him the most horrendous of times. For his interview, you should have said this. You should have said that. You didn't do this. You didn't. Just gave him crap. You know, like he's gone on national TV, talked about flat Earth, and held his own against a astronaut. So if you're gonna go on national TV, it's it's a really fine line, one that I probably couldn't toe, because on the one hand, you, you know, I would just end up punking whoever's making all that noise, tenth man, you're making a horrendous racket. So, the astronaut could have easily been... It could have turned into um, a shit show with Mark Sargent essentially just calling him a flat-out liar on national TV, which, as much as I would want him to do that, and that's what I would want to do, that's not what... That's just not the done thing on national TV. And Mark's one of the few people in this arena that can maintain that kind of balance um, in, front of, in front of a national TV audience. And that, that, to me, I just needed commending, and it got him so much crap, and this betting app thing is no different. Well, and also, if you think about it, when you watch that interview, they, 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 they never let Mark talk to the astronaut. They were have, having to go through the host. They never, Mark never got to talk directly to the astronaut. It was funny. Right, Pierce Morgan played mod mediator, and yeah, they talked through each other, in essence. You're right. But it still would have been so easy for him to tell Piers Morgan, well, the man on your right-hand side is just a liar. You know, he's never been to space. Space is a second law of thermodynamics violation. He's clearly lying to you all. You know, he could have said that. And like I say, if it was me, I would have said that, but I'd never have, I'd, I'd never appear on TV again. Yeah, true. <laughs> these, are, these are the heavy guns, I think. Like when the globe side has to roll out an actual astronaut, or so they say, and, and have them sit on a TV panel across you and look at you in the eye with this smug face. You know, it's, it's not that easy. And, and maybe it's not strategically that clever to just, you know, call him a liar right from the start. But uh, I noticed that, especially during the last couple of years, they do that a lot. They do um, like communication shows where an actual astronaut shows up and answers questions in front of an audience, but it's, it's always controlled somehow. I mean, you can't just yell a question at him. They'll ignore you. Yeah, we had an astronaut show up here at UT um, several years back and I actually went and watched him. And you could have just, I mean, I was in the audience probably 20 rows away. And obviously, there was no interaction from the audience. And I'm going, I'm sitting in my seat going, I wish I could ask him some really hard questions. But of course, that's never going to happen. But I could throw a rock and hit him if I, if I had one, but I didn't. <laughs> well, now they got him going to churches and showing pictures from the ISS and saying that they're Christian and they've been there. And it's just amazing to me how this campaign that they got to hit, whether it's the spiritual side of churches or the secular side of the population. They're hitting it hard to reinforce with the movies coming out. They're just running scared, in my opinion. Yeah, it's back to the Magic the Gathering analogy earlier. I think it was Babs that brought it up. It's like, why would you be here? Why would you dedicate your entire life to telling people that they're idiots and they don't understand what they're talking about? It's, it's akin to me spending all my time on Magic the Gathering forum saying, you guys are stupid. Why would you play this game? This is idiotic. You don't know what real life is. It's like, well, if you don't like Magic the Gathering, don't pay attention to it. If it's inconsequential as you're making out, then why would you be here? Clearly, that's, you know self-contradictory in the respect that if it's inconsequential you wouldn't be paying it any consequence well think about the videos that we've seen of the father 
President Bush, not George Bush, but Herbert Walker in the wheelchair going through NASA, and we see that blue screen behind the astronaut. Then think about the wires that are on the hips of the so-called astronauts in the ISS. And this is their own feed. This isn't someone tinkering with it. This is the NASA feed itself. So you tell me you're going to stand up in the house of God and say you've been up there and it's all real when we've got this information from your own news feeds? What liars? What the heck do you need a blue screen in the ISS? Yeah, they are liars. Dishonest They're totally lying. I... I I'd be like Nathan. I'd, I'd be direct and never have another chance because I would just call him out. That's I'd just get tired of it. That's what happened when we had M. Scott Veach on. So M. Scott Veach actually did come on Flat Earth Debate once, son of an astronaut. He was like, were well, you saying my dad's a liar? I was like, yeah, I am. Absolutely. He lied to you. There's comeback liars paid to pretend. And, and, and the excuse of, uh, okay, I'll admit that uh, we have a second ISS here in some Hollywood basement, and to save cost, we do a lot of filming there, but it's actually happening up in space. I said, wait a minute, you're getting $54 million a day, you have to have a second ISS on Earth to fake with wires? Give me a break. And with that, I will say, if you're watching this on Nathan Oakley, which you are, then massive thanks for tuning in. Hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. Another massive thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this after show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!